Okay, join me today as I rank you over your top 10 rides at Dutch Wonderland. So starting off with a number 10 spot, it's seen that you guys have picked Sky Ride. Now the thing I love about them so much is that no matter whether you want to get from one end of the park to the other, or just want to put your legs up for a while, they are absolutely great. And whilst this ride does look very, very, very slow, what makes this one even cooler is the interactions that you get with the other rides and attractions. With during your adventure throughout the trees, you've been able to rise over the show, which of course, if it is on, will make some amazing views, and even head through the Kingdom Coaster itself, which is an experience that I've never seen before, and can only be experienced on a ride like this. I mean, watch that ride go, how awesome would that be if you were in the middle being able to look up at it, soar past you. And then this is all before you go back into the station building after one incredible ride. Now as you can most likely see by the Sky Ride, this park has got some incredible rides and attractions, and in particular coasters. But as you can probably also tell, they are all for the thrill seekers out there, and that is when rides like Jazz Family Coaster comes in. As at the same time that you will not be dropping, twisting and turning like on the bigger rides, as you make your two or possibly even three for lucky laps around the track. The only thing I would say this sort of ride though is that I wish it had more theming, as whilst the bigger rides does not really need it with you racing past it at such fast speed, the smaller ones and especially the family ones, it would be nice if they added a dragon or their mascot sort of thing, or to be honest, even a bit of grass on the floor. Have you guys ever heard the phrase, do not judge a book by its cover? Well, our next ride definitely has that. This is Wonder Whip, and at the same time, it does not look like a really intense ride, and actually just one for the children out there. I was lucky enough to experience one of these once, and trust me when I say, it is an experience that you, nor your stomach, is ever going to forget. With you quite literally being whipped around the corner, again, and again, and again, making those straight sections, honestly, the best part of that ride. Comment down below though, have you done that ride before and if so, do you agree that it is so, so intense? I think by just hearing the name Turtle 12 that I'm going to want to take a ride and when seeing the turtles now right in front of me, it is instantly a no-brainer. I do not care what you do on that ride, but those turtle cars are so, so cool. The ride definitely does not seem bad either. Within a turtle shell, you spinning and rocking and bouncing up and down for the entire ride duration, just like your typical twist and twirl. And so whilst I normally suggest not doing these sort of rides with them being very common around the world, I mean, for the theme of being inside of a turtle shell and spinning around non-stop, it should definitely be a must-do on your visit to the park. Well, talking about getting dizzy, our next ride literally is called The Twister, and so we already know that it's going to be one crazy attraction. How dizzy though, you honestly don't know until you're sat up on this ride vehicle, as the best way that I can describe these sort of rides is it's basically like a giant roulette board, that will then spin around and tilt, with you basically sitting upon the numbers of them. But oh no, this roulette board does not just spin one way, it also spins the other way too. So when you think it's all came to a stop, and you are lowering back down again, be prepared for it to get even more crazy, with you going backwards this time, in circles again, and again, and of course again again. You cannot have a theme park without a swing ride, and Dutch Wonderland is no exception, with their one being called Flying Trapeze. And I have got to admit, the theme for this ride is pretty cool, with it basically being like you're inside of a circus, and of course flying on a trapeze. But then at the same time, as I said about rides being common, this one is the most common ride out there, and so if you are visiting a busy day, and want to do rides like Kingdom Coast or Merlin's Challenge, it's probably best to leave this one at the start of the day, and then if you do get the time after doing all those other rides, that you can only find a Dutch Wonderland, you come back on it and experience the thrills of quite literally flying through the sky. If you know me well, then you know I love a water size, however with theme parks not really being able to have both rise and size for obvious reasons. Such attractions as Pipeline Plunge is so so awesome, with you being able to experience the fun and thrills of a size, with you going inside of course of a giant pipe, twisting and turning as you make your way down, and occasionally get a few splashes in your faces, but instead of having your clothes absolutely soaked inside out, you will be able to sit with up to one other person inside of a dinghy and head to the bottom. Oh yeah, it also seems like this one has got two sides, so if you are in a group of two or more, you can actually race each other to the bottom, just adding even more fun to this already amazing ride. It's just so annoying that these rides are over so quickly though. Okay, before we even get onto the fun, the excitement, or of course the soakingness of this log film ride right here, I've got to show you that drop. That must be the smallest drop I think I've ever seen. I mean, when you look at the people next to the drop on this POV, they are literally the same height as it, so I imagine on the first drop of the double splash log flume ride will not get you too wet. However, it does seem like the second drop is definitely superior, with after you make your way around all that lovely scenery and theming, your slow waterways going around, and of course you are timing it at this point by the first drop, 
you will then rise to the top of the lift hill before then plunging back down to the bottom, definitely making up for that first job on this ride. And one little final point I want to talk about right now, and I never really mentioned in our sort of videos, is the people sitting on the top of those lift hills, you see that guy right there, what do they do on their break? Because literally the entire time, they're just sitting there watching everyone make sure they're all safe. But then when they go on break, do they, I don't know, sit down and relax? I don't know. Now I've got to admit, this has got to be one of the hardest parts to choose from the number two and one spot riders every single time you visit here and ride one of these two rides. You will just want to pick both of them to be the best rides over here. And so when seeing this ride at the number two spot, I think at the moment I would agree with it. Now the Kingdom Coaster is definitely the iconic ride of the park, opening back in 1992, but still to this day having the same charm of a wooden coaster with you racing around the 2000 feet of track at some pretty crazy speeds, dropping, twisting, turning, and of course having many airtime heels, which we all love about these wooden coasters, especially if you manage to get the back of this car. Plus when researching this ride, oh my god does the new colour scheme seem better compared to the white. Now of course the white again has those classic colours, however the new colour scheme really matches the park's vibes and to be honest making the already amazing experience of bouncing up and down and up and down and up and down those airtime hills even more awesome. You guessed it, the number one spot of this park has got to go to Merlin's Mayhem. Now for starters, being able to dangle your legs in these sort of rides are such an awesome experience and actually there's not many of these sort of rides out there which does not take you upside down lows or around massive sharp bank turns so to be able to have one for the family out there and kind of get them into that fun sensation of flying through the air is pretty sweet. But that does not mean the Phil Seekers can't enjoy it either as when you do board the train what well, looks like only one train, so be prepared at queues and get quite long for this, you will still be able to experience the fun and excitement of dropping through tunnels and around bends, just on a little bit of a smaller scale. So I would agree, if you have to pick one ride to do on your visit to Dutch Wonderland, then this would be the one. Thank you all for watching, bye bye.